Who's the radio operator of the spacefaring vessel, LB-01? We were given the mission of broadcasting the serialized gaming podcast, Safe Space, to as many people as we possibly could. If you can hear this message, then clearly it's been a success. If that's the case, then you should know that what you're about to listen to is a tabletop role-playing game where five people roll dice and tell a story of science fiction and survival horror using the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. It was originally formatted for YouTube, but the records have been modified for an optimal audio experience. However, be warned, this is a survival horror podcast, and there may be descriptions of violence, gore, psychological terrors and mental trauma that some listeners may find disturbing. If you're still out there, then make sure you have your stim packs ready and whatever refreshments you may need. I'm starting the data recording playback now. This is Safe Space. Episode 9. Audio file name. Safe Haven. Last we left off, in the cryo bay of the Icarus, the crew chose to try and wake up and rescue as many of those survivors that they found as they could. To help, the maintenance android Hutch activated an emergency override procedure to open the pods. As this was happening, and the gang began to pull potential survivors from their slumber, the room began to change. The floor began to sink inwards. Empty pods falling down into the space below and whatever was there. And from there emerged vast tentacles made from organic tissues and mechanical parts. The party managed to get three survivors to safety. And most of them got out of the room. But not before Hutch was grabbed and taken away by the creature. And Wendy and Blaze were so horrified that they finally snapped. A cycle of fear and panic overtaking them. (laughs) <laughs> which um, which was crazy <laughs> but it over- overtake them it did as they witnessed the horror and then chose to run Blaze shut the door before the tentacles could get out although he did see them heading towards one of the cryopods that had opened with its survivor still in there waking up three had been saved though Sarah Madigan, Roy Zetterling and Quill Albach Albach, <laughs> which is, I don't know why I've created these names for myself. Quilliam. Quilliam, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, do you know what? That's actually canon. That his full name's Quilliam. Um, they're three very different figures who had the rudest of awakenings and were now in a living nightmare. A nightmare that the Doctor was eager to get them out of. And so everyone made their way to the vac suits and prepared to leave a ship that seemed to be changing with each passing moment. The docking bridge between the O'Brien and the Icarus was still attached, and despite the outer airlock, for some reason not wanting to open, hmm, they pushed past and began booking it back to the safety of their own ship, taking the survivors with them. But the mutated cruise liner was not finished, and parts of the vessel reached out to grab them as they ran. Shockingly, it began to devour and absorb the docking bridge itself as well. The party told the captain to blow the struts of the bridge 
and as it splintered into different parts and bolts flew into the void of space, they scrambled to get inside the airlock of the O'Brien. All of them made it, except for one. Zan Brazel used the last of his strength to push an injured blaze into the airlock. Damn moments <laughs> moments before the bridge gave way <laughs> and he began fa- he began falling into the void of space. And that's where we pick up episode 9. And that was also the point where PJ threw some expletives at me and everyone was just really quite upset. <laughs> well deserved, I think. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think as a GM, when we do things like this, we deserve everything we get. (laughs) Um, But this scene, intense as as it is, imagine it's the the opening of the TV show and our episode opens with several opening shots. Each one of them first-person viewpoints from within visors of spacesuits. Each one complete with its own soundtrack of heavy breathing against the void of, the, the void of space the madness without any soundtrack at first you see a vigor a figure staring from within the airlock they're looking at three other people in shiny new icarus vac suits standing at the back of the airlock and we can hear panicked voices from these people this figure turns seeing a figure in a bulkier and older looking vac suit floating into the airlock and we cut to that viewpoint from from their point of view and it's hard to make out at first. The movement is less controlled as this figure is floating chaotically into the airlock. They're breathing even heavier. Diagnostics, numbers and a message reading warning. Oxygen levels critical, flashing onto the visor in front of them. As this figure, you see the hands of this figure reach down to staunch a wound in their leg that's releasing a dark crimson liquid into zero G. And we cut once more to another figure who is half in the ship and half out, desperately holding on to a large sheet of metal, looking looking up at a horrific sight not too far away. And they're struggling. And they're just... Their, their arm is shaking as they're trying to keep a grip on this enormous piece of metal in front of them. Their boots actually sort of clamped onto the side of the ship itself. And that visor is looking at a figure that is slowly falling out of view. And we cut to that visor. The visor of Zan Brazel as he's looking at the face of Wendy who is gritting her teeth, screaming, and trying to get him back into the ship. Bring a biro. (laughs) As he is, it's it's almost like sinking to the bottom of the ocean as everything seems to be happening in slow motion. And now everyone needs to make a speed check. Oh, (laughs) jeez. <clears throat> can I add my zero G? <laughs> you can. Funnily enough, in funnily zero. enough, you're in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Athletics. Yes, yes, you can do that as well, Monday. Oh ho 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 God, <laughs> he may be going into orbit fairly. Soon. Okay, okay, right. It's a space delirium. That's what it is. Immediately, we are starting off with action. Santa Claus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are you up to Christmas? You ain't gonna get it. <laughs> Just don't get him talking about his ex-wife. Okay. This is Claus. Uh, Zam, what did you get, and was yes. it a success or a fail? It was a success. I rolled an 11. Oh, nice. Wendy, what did you get? So I needed a 37, and I got a 72. Okay, 72, fail. Okay. Sorry. 
Bye. Bye. Uh, Blaze, what did you get? Pale, 63. Okay. Doc, what did you get? Failed as a 54. Okay. No stress, right? No stress for these speed checks. This is just... It's, it's, it's our version of an initiative order to see mm. what ha- what happens at any one point. And uh, there was a lot of fails on that one. Yes. Including a couple of um, other characters who may al- also be on the board currently. Um, Darling Quilliam. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zam. But Zam yes. goes first. Zam Brazel. Okay. Um, right, so I'm still connected to the bridge, aren't I? Yes, there was two, essentially, if, if you're looking like this, the bridge was made up of uh, several different yeah. metallic parts. Wendy's holding on to one, which is like that, and mm. your one has separated for it. Mm. So you're sort of, you, you're falling down like that. You're kind of like starting to slip below her. What would you like to do? Um, well, I think... So I'm going to like disconnect the mag boots. And then try and launch myself off the platform. Okay. So you just go try and just... Try and jump towards Wendy. Yeah, okay. So Wendy's on like... I mean, if we're looking at this, we're looking like that. If she's holding yeah. onto it there, you'll be yeah. grabbing that bit. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, then I will say, um, you can do it. With the zero G, you can, you can make mm-hmm. the jump. But it's going to have to be a strength check to see if you can... If I can grab it, yeah. If you can grab it, yeah. And I can add my zero G to that, yeah. Yes, yes. So that is going to be forty-four. It's been nice knowing you. Yeah, it has been nice knowing you. Because that is a ninety-seven. As you push off, Zam. If it was, if if that platform was solid, it would have been a decent. But of course, the pressure yeah. of you pushing it, there wasn't as much force. And you're scrabbling to try and find purchase. You're you're, you're very short. But it's not like you just you're falling. It's not like you're plummeting. You're in, mm. you're in, you're no, in, I'm in space. Yeah, so yeah I'm you're in space. Kind of yeah. yeah. And as this is happening as well, just to paint a picture, this bri- this docking bridge has been explosively sort of disconnected. There is shrapnel and bits of metal like flying everywhere, bolts. And we're not talking like sheer bits that are going to cut any of the crew, but certainly there's lots of carnage about. Oh, and there's a, a, a strange moor that's appeared on the side of the ship that's been eating the docking bridge. Mm. Which they... Yeah. <laughs> that's not a surprise. <laughs> Lizzie looked very surprised then, but I did tell them last time <laughs> <laughs> that a mouth had started to appear. I was just wondering about the ship, and it's like, oh no, the Icarus. Yeah, the Icarus. Yeah. Not the Susan. Yeah, no, not, not the Susan. Okay. So, Zam... You're starting to yeah. you fall. You, 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 you've uh, begun. I'm off the bridge. I'm in space. Yeah. Is the part that Wendy's holding on to, is that still connected to the rest of the bridge? No. It, it sort of came it's, apart right. and she grabbed it. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Because it, okay. it was... Yeah. She grabbed it so that you could... So we're disconnected from the Icarus now. Yes. You more than anyone else. Wendy's got her yeah. mag boots yeah. locked in. Okay. So I'm Wendy's locked into the Susan O'Brien. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she's locked into the Susan O'Brien. So I, I'll just call over to the comms then, and I'll just say, "Get move the ship away." Zam, what the hell's going on out there? Just move the ship away. And a couple of things happen now. Firstly, Doc, you see as blazes. <laughs> Spinning into this airlock. Two of the figures in the vac suits begin. They begin moving to grab hold of him, to try and control him, to stop him spinning. The ones in the fancy suits. The ones in the fancy suits. Yep, two of them. They're the smaller ones. The smaller people are scrabbling to try and grab this guy that's tumbling through the air, and also he's 
I know, I know I painted a picture for you a bit, Gav, but I'd imagine that you'd be holding that wound <laughs> to stop yeah. yourself bleeding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're, Both hands are occupied. Yeah, so, the, so while they're doing this, and it's going to take two of them, they're not going to make a roll for this, because it's not like they're... Because you, you floated in, so they're just... They're going to grab hold of you, and this is this is Sarah and Roy. They've begun moving over. What's William up to? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they 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 begin pulling Blaze sort of downwards, so you'll be able to get to the floor at some point. But there, and but you can hear the panicked voices. Doc, you see Quill begin. Chum, chum, chum. He's he moves over. To the doorway, where Wendy is, and he connects his boots, and he looks around, and he leans down, and he grabs hold of the thing that went. He he does the same thing that Wendy's doing, and he just he turns around to look at you, Wendy, and just goes, "Go, I got this." He's gonna make a roll. That is unbelievable. Doesn't he, got this. He's got disadvantage because he's he hasn't had a stim pack from his cryo sleep. Please. I rolled a three and I rolled a nine. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Will is buff. He's got this. He's got Can this. Can we hire him? <laughs> well, Can we Wendy, play Quill? Wendy wings. If one of us next one of us that dies. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you know, um, and you feel it like. He grabs it because he has. He grabs it with two hands. You immediately feel it stabilize a bit, Wendy, because you you were losing. You know, one of your arms is dislocated, and the other one was holding on as much. As, but then all of a sudden, this thing, someone strong has grabbed hold of it. It is now the ship's turn. Which ship? Icarus, I would imagine. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, the bad ship. Two things. It, it gets. It gets. Wow. Will it get two actions? It should get two actions because everyone else gets two actions. I normally do two attacks. The warden is just thinking about this. <laughs> the first thing you see, anyone that's looking out, there is all of this junk and scrap and just bits of like shattered metal and stuff, and you can see more like appendages and weird, like techno organic tentacles and weird like almost like bone like spears and stuff they're just going <laughs> and they seem to be grabbing bits of this scrap and pulling it back into the Icarus it is literally sort of like they're just grabbing everything scrap and it's pulling it back into the ship but it's going to get one attack at Zam as he's floating <laughs> through space Rolled an 88. <laughs> so it's a critical fail. <laughs> the Icarus explodes. Oh, dear. The um, Icarus is now depressed. Yes. <laughs> I will say this. With a critical fail, it's inadvertently going to help you. Give me a nudge. It goes like one of like the large sort of like spiked struts is... St- heading towards you and a bit of that debris hits it and knocks it off course but because it hits the debris the debris nudges you and you're a bit closer (laughs) it nudges you back up it does I would say make a body save Uh, body save body 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 save can I add my zero G to that as well? Uh, Not to this body save yeah because it would have just it's it's essentially the impact the blunt impact of this debris hitting you it's going to push you back up, but uh, that's a ninety-one. Ninety-one. Okay. So you... yeah. So uh, you you're not going to believe this, but that's a fail. Is it a fail? <laughs> it is. Oh, I should add stress to that as well, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'm so oh, I've um, got to add stress for that as well. Then you. Should... <laughs> well, no, I, no. You, 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 you don't, Doc. You don't. He's not close enough. 
He's out. Oh, he's, right. he's out of sight, out of mind. You have no idea what's happening right oh, now. Oh fuck that! Thinking about it, I should have had stress for the last one that I failed as well, shouldn't I? Yes. Yes. So, you got some more stress oh, I'm on right. twenty-one now. Okay, and you take is that all? Yeah. You take four points of like just right. Okay. Bludgeoning so damage. That, right. So the four points that I got two, and then I've got a. I, have you got a wound? A wound. Yeah. So okay. there's one, and then the other one is the wound, and then I got to add two. Two more yeah. on there as well. Okay, yeah. so could you roll me uh, a d10, please, Jim? <laughs> a five. Now, that is. A five is a major injury. Mm-hmm. Okay. Calm down, fracture. But the one, but the two, the two options that it's giving me, are uh, is the armor, or your hand is broken. Now, in this context, I think your armor, which currently has three, yeah, that's done. You need right. to get back on the ship now because it's almost because it hit your back. Yeah, it's crushed a lot of those sort of systems, which which would keep the vac suit safe. Okay, um, so you're closer. You're within. But so am I on one for armor points again now? Is that you're on no art. You're, um, yeah, yeah. It'll be one. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But essentially, your armor could be your vac suit could start shutting down soon. However, okay. that heavy impact pushed you a bit closer. Yeah. And so, it is now the doc's turn. Now. There's a couple of Sarah and Roy are bringing Blaze down. Blaze, remember, has been injured, and his suit has been penetrated. Wendy is still out with Quill at the moment. She's still in that sort of predicament, and you don't know where Zam is. But yeah. you did. You did hear him tell to the captain, "Get the ship out of here." I can't really help Blaze. Until the airlock's closed and we're in the ship. Well, if you Blaze had a, doesn't know this. If, yeah, if you had a patch kit, do I have a patch? Or some gaffer tape? If you had I any, have a patch kit. If you have a patch oh, kit, a rope. It, got fifty foot yeah, rope. It would be it would be your turn to go over there and basically wrap that thing yeah. up so his so he's not gonna. Okay, I will. I will patch kit to Blaze. Okay. Patch so me you, up, duck. So you're. It's not a medical kit, and you're still like badly wounded, of course. But you see, the doc immediately just starts sealing it, and you see the visor that that oxygen critical, oxygen critical, and it immediately just it disappears. It's still like an amber light because you, your suit's buggered, but there's no worrying messages showing up right in front of your face. Um, and. Uh, Whose turn is it next? It is. It is Blaze Kelvin's turn. <laughs> Fuck! What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> the integrity of your suit, the armor. It doesn't have three armor points. You've got one armor point because the suits. Oh, um. One now. Yeah, it's one armor point. Zero because it punctured it. Yeah, no, it's one armor point because it's still there. But clothes, for instance, in this game, clothes are one armor point because there's a good chance I'm going to roll at least one. I can't roll below a one on a d10, so <laughs> so it's going to hurt you anyway. Um, but um, yes, so as soon as the integrity of the suit goes into effect, have we got time for this duck? I <laughs> usher Doc away and then rush to, to You're where, welcome <laughs> Got a good Sam And uh, I'll run to run clomp to, uh, <laughs> Like a Muppet <laughs> Seriously we need to do a Muppet episode yeah. We all need to make two puppets <laughs> Yeah, I'll go to... Can I, uh, when you get to the doorway, you'll be able to move yeah. to the doorway. And you can see Quill and Wendy holding this 
can I see Zan? <laughs> well, you probably can because he's been pushed up a little bit. He's Zan, you to... fool! <laughs> Move the ship away. That's my go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Blake. Also, I'm there to help anyone else. Like, yeah. Do I, do yeah. I take any abuse damage? So, so, so what what you're essentially saying, that was your sort of movement, but you're going to give advantage on whoever's going to... Cause you, if that's possible. Yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Of course. Make sure Very Zan kind. Heard. Of course. He's a damn fool. Well, it's going to be interesting because it's Wendy's go. Okay. Zam has once again appeared back into your view. <laughs> Just sort of like... <laughs> <"Argh!"> <laughs> like, probably... <"Argh!" laughs> Oh, he's got a trampoline down yeah. there. And you, Everyone <laughs> recoils in fear. And you can see, like, the back of his vac suit looks like, you know, something smashed into it hard. You can you can tell that. He's not... Yeah. Okay. So Quill has got hold of this thing now. Mm-hmm. How, what's the distance... It's pro- I, I would say e- each Zan. of each of these panels is probably about ten feet, possibly. And so, how far away is them? Um, for the, if that's ten feet, he's probably about twelve feet, thirteen feet. Okay. He's he's almost there. He is mm. he is almost at the thing, but he could he could be he was he was falling down. Now he's being hit oh. back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. No marine gets left behind, and he's not even a fucking marine. Um, can I release my boots from the Susan O'Brien mm-hmm. and kind of get out onto the panel mm-hmm. and try and? Hmm. I guess I'm going to have to sort of like the way... pull myself out into yeah. the void of space yeah. the, the... And, and slide gracefully down the panel, yeah. hooking my boots under some sort of strut or thing whilst grabbing for Zam. So the way as the... the ambition, yes, Could the you way just walk on the panel. The way that I mean, it it may be less intensive on whoever's holding it if she does what she's like, because almost it'll be like she's pushing off from the side of a swimming pool and sliding all the way down. Um, to try and grab you as you pull past. And Blaze said he was going to help. So when this happens, <laughs> when, the, when, this ha- when this when this happens, he's just got some pom poms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can either give her more force, or you can hold on to the. The strut itself, you can ha- help Quill and give them more stability. I think I'll, I'll hold on to the strut. Okay. I think that's which, um, option. which will give you advantage on this check, oh God. Wendy. Oh, God. Okay, this awesome. is going to be... Yeah, <laughs> really hard. It's, just, it's going to... It's going to be hard to do this I would say it's a speed check because mm-hmm. you're going to have to slide down you're doing several things quick because you're yeah, activating yeah. the mag boots and grabbing him what um, in your arsenal would you like to add to your speed check I would like to add my athletics I will allow that um I want to add my theology, but I'm having a complete crisis no, of faith. Yeah, you've given so up I'm your God. I'm not sure that it's like, if there is a God, show yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure that's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's just my athletics. I don't think military training really covers this. Apart from the determination not to leave anyone behind. Mm, let's see. Let's see if I can help you out a little bit here. Your stats. Because this is a this is a very brave thing to do. 
basic training provided to all military personnel is the military training. Does it involve sliding I, on broken do, doors do you know what? in space? Do you know what? I'm going to allow you this purely because it's built in. No one gets left behind. That's that is part that's been. I'll allow this because it's a because I, I I mean I'm not sure what Wendy's speed is. She may have advantage, but this is still a, a difficult check to do this. So I am looking for a forty-seven. That's a sixty-four. So that's not good. But that's a twenty-six. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have got there even without any of the bonuses. That would have got me. Got me there. Okay. Well. Now I'm here. I don't know what I'm going to do. But there, there, there are there are <laughs> there are choices and there are consequences. You made that choice. It was a very brave choice. You made that role. It was a brilliant role. You connect oh the mag. Wendy like literally slides down, connects the mag boots, and she grabs hold with a one good arm. <laughs> Never forget, people at home. This woman only has one arm, and she's doing this. Um, and. Of course, Zam's trajectory is moving up, so you grab hold of him and you hold on to him tight. Make a body save. Save. Jeez. Which one works? The blue one. Ow. Oh, a 19. That's a success. Oh. You don't take any stress, but. And I've halved this damage. You take two muscle damage. Purely because, yeah, right. yeah. So you're further messing up your arm. But Zam, she's got you. And now, <laughs> this is where it's going to get crazy. Because it's the captain's turn. <laughs> <laughs> and Zam told her to move the ship. He's still telling her to move the yeah. ship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she, she, she's like, and she's looking at, you can see like, you know, as we cut to the cap, she's looking over and like, there's strange bits at the front of the ship, like it seems like part of the windows are smashing and more sort of organic bits are coming out of the windows and like, w Wendy, as you're holding Zam, you sort of look up and you can see where this hole, there's more sort of appeared on this ship, there's also like a strange sort of organic texture, like, like almost like tree roots just begin growing outwards it's almost like the ship is starting to change even more uh and you can hear the captain go what in the sam hells is that and then uh she's gonna try and pilot she piloted it one way and caught some of you she's now gonna ride the ship and she's going to make a piloting check <laughs> She got twenty four. <laughs> She's so good. She's, She's so good. Like every time I needed a roll, bloody hell. Whew. She's the captain. Yeah. Um, however, so she begins. You you begin feeling it go. And Doc in the airlock, you feel like, you know, you want to move backwards. If it wasn't for the mag boots, you might go off your feet. Um, Blaze and Quill, like. There's an immense amount of strain on you as the ship begins moving in the opposite direction. Ooh. And you're holding on to this sheet of metal that has two of the crew hanging on for dear life as the Susan O'Brien is moving away from the Icarus. And you can see, like, as it, as it moves further away, you can see, like, bits of the metal, you know, the rest of the scrap is still being grabbed. From the air and everything starts shifting and moving all of your stomachs just want to turn as she's making like a, a proper move to sort of stop and begin turning and pulling out of the, the reach of this thing um, it is very very intense um, but she managed to get it out of reach of this creature this creature does no no longer has reach to get any of you. However, the ship is moving, so we're going to get another speed check. We're going to have one more round. Because no one's out of the woods yet. 
Okay, Zam, what did you get? 81. 81. Makes sense, because you're just hanging on for two lives. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that makes sense. Uh, Wendy, what did you get? 50. 50. Blaze, what did you get? 38. It's a fail. Oh, it's a fail. Ooh. And Doc, what did you get? 40, which is a fail. Failures all round. So the first round will go to the creature, and you see, you just see this thing is just changing, and it's just gobbling up more and more bits. You see a bit that not too long ago, just seconds ago, Zan was in that area, and it's just just gets taken. Um, and crazily enough, it's Blaze's turn. <laughs> <laughs> As the creature can't reach you, it's just it's just devouring whatever is there as the Susan O'Brien is getting. Um, I don't know. Just remain as ballast and okay, <laughs> like uh, hold on. Okay, then um, I would say make a strength check with advantage because you're not doing it alone. Uh, oh, Quilliam, <laughs> <laughs> strength. Uh... Can I add athletics? Yeah. That was 38. I need 36. <laughs> Two. <laughs> and you think I'm bad at leaving the players the cliffhangers? My players do it to me. Um, yes. We learned it from you. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you just lock yourself in place. You, Yeah, you're completely just in the zone. Just ignoring the pain. The, the thunderous pain in, in your leg. I'm like ultimate warrior. But this thing... Jangling on yeah. the ropes. <laughs> um, only without do the... that with one hand. <laughs> And uh, this thing is as solid as a rock. Doc, it is now your turn. Um. The two other people that are in there, uh, Roy and Sarah, are pretty panicked by the whole thing. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's not much I can I can do mm. to help the others rescue yeah. Zan, yeah. so I am going to go over and try make, and... Make sure, because they could still tumble out of the airlock. Yeah, just... just... <laughs> Make sure they're stable, make yeah. sure they're okay, check yeah. them, try and calm them down, all yeah. that. Yeah. Good doctor shit. Yeah, and certainly Sarah's like, she's like breathing heavily, and like, Roy's like, oh, oh God. It's, it's okay, we're going to get this airlock closed momentarily. <laughs> a space is just moving at a vast pace behind him. Um, and uh, yeah, I was, I will say, um, it's not you're not gonna get stressed for this, um, but just make make uh, an intellect check because you're just trying to calm these people. It's almost like a social check, just to make an intellect check. Intellect check. Uh, Twenty-seven, which is a success. The good doctor's words. He keeps them like just keep keep focused on me. You know, don't don't look behind me for God's sake. Don't look behind me. <laughs> look into the black emptiness of despair behind me. Um. <laughs> And as you're saying this, like, Dr. Forrest, you feel Sarah's hand just grab hold of your glove and she's just holding it for dear life. Um, but well done, Doctor. Good shot, Doctor. <laughs> Very good shot. Um, <laughs> extra points to people who get that reference. Right. Uh, <laughs> and with that, it is Wendy's turn. Yes, Wendy's turn. Let me go, Wendy. <laughs> no. Let me go. <laughs> no. This, this is like that. <laughs> you know True Lies when he's holding on to the to Jamie Lee Let Curtis. Let me go, Wendy. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's speeding along behind them. Yeah. Zan pleading with you, Wendy. <sighs> okay. No. <laughs> um... In the ship. 
Oh, I don't know if this works. Because I don't know anything about science. Uh, so this is neither do I. Hey, this is so cinema I, science. I.e., none of it matters. No. Uh... <laughs> and I were to pull a gun and shoot into the Zam. void of space. <laughs> shoot Zam. Let me go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> It wasn't a rescue mission at all. <laughs> I just wanted your credits. <laughs> would that give? Would that create momentum? I think even in science it would. Yeah. yeah. Even in science, yeah. would it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going to propel you back yeah. towards yeah. the ship. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Like, kind of. To, yeah. To shoot. It's we're back to the um the A team tank thing of just like controlling yeah. your your movement which is my i love this it's so crazy it's so crazy and over the top and jerry bruckheimer i am all if, if that for doesn't it. work i will just use core strength um oh god wendy's got loads of that she climbed up a monster <laughs> a couple of sessions ago um okay yes you can do this if you want to <laughs> how this way i'm reckoning ha- we can both kind of you have uh, to you have to factor this in wendy mm-hmm the hand that you want to use the gun, you have a dislocated shoulder. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to aim. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am, I guess, to like, propel in the right direction. So you're gonna yeah. you're gonna pull him up, and at the same time, fire the gun. So it just yeah. So you both I let go with my boots and just hope that we go in the right direction. As a as a spaceship is moving, this is. Are you suggesting this is a bad idea? No, 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 no. no in in tabletop role playing, no idea is a bad idea. Well, um, <laughs> not for the GM because they can just watch it all happen. Um, <laughs> You're more than welcome to try. I'm going and surf my way back. No, in if, you, if you want, if you want, floor, but... if you want, to bring him, bring him back. I will allow this to happen. It's going to take a. It's got to be a strength roll, I think. Yeah. It'll be a strength roll because you're you're trying to pull. Zam's a weight. I know he's not the tallest man. There is no weight in space. What, even with Zam? Even with Zam. <laughs> <laughs> he does not break the laws of I don't know. He's he's been carrying a lot for the past episode. <laughs> emotional Emo- weight. Emotional oh, his emotional baggage. Oh emotional his emotion <laughs> Emotional <laughs> baggage <laughs> is his emotional baggage could give you disadvantage. <laughs> I've got a I've got a toolbox full of trinkets as well, so. <laughs> No, hold on, right. Let's yeah, get no. this in right, right. The toolbox may be lost. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Just bear that in mind. I, I was thinking about this. All the things that the characters have said they've been carrying, and now yeah. they're trying to do all of this. <laughs> um, okay. Make that strength check, Wendy. And I add yeah. my military training and all my athletics. Athletics. Okay. This isn't a military trained move. What you're attempting okay. to do? Firing a gun. So I'm trying to get nice a try. forty-three. Blue or purple, Jim? Blue or purple? Uh, which ones are the best? I can't remember. Blue. <laughs> blue. Okay, blue, blue. is what I picked up. So sixteen. <laughs> These puppies are going in a frame. Okay. <laughs> the, the baddest of badasses. Okay. <laughs> this crazy <laughs> probably doesn't work. Science experiment. Zam, you feel yourself get pulled back and you Ooh. are you are basically just Wendy's just holding on to you. And as soon as you hit there, you feel her disconnect. And you don't hear it, but then the gun the gun goes off. Um with your dislocated shoulder, yeah. right, I'm going to say this won't incur stress. 
And I do this a little. I, the players oh, have got no, a lot no, of stress. This should hurt. This should hurt. But I'm make a body save. Tough. Make a body save. Mm-hmm. If you fail, you'll get um, you'll get a D5's worth of pain, and that gun you'll lose grip of the gun, and the gun mm-hmm. will disappear into space. Okay, I have two. I fail. That's uh, a fifty-six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, three more points. It's okay. I have two. Three more points of ligament damage. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> um, and the gun, you, you you do the important move you had to do, but then the hand just lets go because the pain is just so agonising. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, and this does sound fucking insane, <laughs> you're moving back towards the doors. <laughs> Blaze, you see them. Begin like... It's just moving back towards you. Um, and you fool. Oh God! And it's the, it's the NPC's turn. Two of them. On, are, two of them are being calmed by the dock. He's just like ah. <laughs> um. Another. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Quill sees that happen. Oh, what is he going to do? Is he going to do something as stupid as everyone else? Yes. No. If he wants a job. <clears throat> no, he just should just stay on board. If you want to live. Otherwise, damn sacrifice is in vain. <laughs> this chimp wants his character to die so bad. Can you can you hear this? <laughs> Can you hear this? Um, <laughs> can, he re- can he grab us? Quill's going to yeah, reach out to grab you. And uh, and uh, it helps because Blaze did so well on his check that he's locked it in place that Quill's... He's, he's still going to keep hold of one arm and he's going to reach out to try and grab you. Um, very magical, isn't it? Because, you know... So yeah, abracadabras reach out and grab you. The, doc- <laughs> <laughs> the doc's doing a uh, bad patch Adams yeah. impression to yeah. magic to try and entertain his, uh, his patients. Oh my god. <laughs> right, okay. So he's going to try and. That face. Yeah, he succeeded. Just. <laughs> Jesus. He doesn't very... Because the way these, these these NPCs I've created here, there's a thing in the, in the player's handbook, which is contractors, whereas if you pick people up, they're, they're, they're very low stat people. They only have... They don't have health, they have wounds. So if they get hit once, they could die immediately, that kind of thing. Um, as such... Their stats aren't very high. Um, And he had to get a 25 and he got a 24. (laughs) Well done, Quilliam. So he manages to grab you. Quill merch. (laughs) (laughs) My new hero. Um, And he grabs hold of you, Wendy. He managed to grab hold of you and... Begin. I really hope it's not by the hon- the, the, the really I, I, hideous I, I, arm. I would like, imagine. By I, a foot. I would imagine one yeah. arm is fairly dead at your side. The other arm is wrapped around <laughs> a complaining Zam Brazel. <laughs> he wanted to die. Uh, a, on, one, he wanted to die a hero. All he said is, "Let me go." Let me go. <laughs> Anything to get out of paying alimony. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right! I've just seen how much money I've got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're in. Um, that was the NPC's turn, and I think, I think every. Oh no, it is Zam Brazel's turn. It's Zam, but what is Zam going to do? Off. What is Zam going to do? <laughs> no, he's not going to jeopardise it. Um, is there anything that I can do? There is... Well, I mean, Wendy has hold of you. You are not yeah. incapacitated. It's not like your bones are no. broken or anything like that. You're, you are... 
within yeah, walking. My suit is damaged. Your suit is damaged. You're within so walking I'm distance. Losing like oxygen. Yeah, you're not quite losing oxygen yet. It hasn't. Okay. It hasn't. But the the suit is won't give you any external protection to. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll just move as best I can, just to make sure that me and Wendy get. So are ship. so are you moving? Are you taking Wendy with you at the same time? So because yeah, remember, so Quill, figure... Quill's got hold hold of her. So you yeah. can all just yeah. So we're just gonna like push forward. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. I won't. I won't get you to make a yeah, check. I'll do that. I won't, I won't get you to make a check for that unless you want to make a check for that. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> With your zero G as well. Um, yeah, you and me. He sort of yeah, yeah. yeah he connects his mag boots just to give him a bit of, and everyone yeah. is at the end of this round. I said this one more round. <laughs> it works out brilliant. As as they tumble into the airlock. And Blaze, you pull back as well, and uh, and let go of that bit of the the shrapnel that you were holding on to for dear life. The last bit of the bridge as it begins, and the ship's still moving. And you hear over the intercoms, "How's it going out there? Is everyone on? What the hell happened?" Let's go. Just move us away from the ship, please, Captain. We're Doc, is everyone in the, the airlock? airlock? Everyone's in. Everyone's in. Right. Shut, Shut the doors, doors, Doc. Shut the doors. Um, and uh, you you get in. You manage to tumble in, and the, the airlock doors. Um, it hasn't fully become started, like you know, doing all its its checks and everything. It's just made sure you're all in. And uh, you see. The captain in the in in a sort of in the bridge. She's just um, flicking switches and she looks in some monitors and she can see that the Icarus has started to turn. She's like, "Oh my god!" And it's her turn. <laughs> she um she begins tapping things in. She goes. Darcy, I need you to reroute all power to the thrusters immediately. Certainly, Captain. Okay, I need I need a boost for a, a good thirty seconds. Give me give me everything you got. She immediately gets on the comms, and you just hear it over the the airlock. I hope you're all strapped in, cause this is gonna be a bumpy ride. And uh, let's see how well she does this. It's not going to be without pain. <laughs> uh, she just missed her pilot and check, so she. But she's still going to be able to do what she wanted. And you see her, as you see, like the the charts and the data pads just sort of going. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, ready in. And you hear this over the monitor as well. Strap in, ready to go in. Three. Two. One. Mark. And she hits it. And all of a sudden, what you feel in there, if your mag boots aren't on, you're moving. <laughs> mine is still on, though, aren't they? You're I'm still, you're it, still yeah. on. And I've okay. still got hold of Wendy as well, yeah? As, yeah, as the captain just basically punches it as fast as she can just to get a good distance away from whatever this thing was. I mean, the Icarus was making, it was starting to turn. It wasn't chasing out after you, but she's just booking it. Everyone, make me a body save. Zam, with advantage. Oh. You're the only one that said you had your mag boots on. <laughs> I have mine on. Or was it body oh, save? And Doc, yeah, because yeah, 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 you were in. I don't, uh, need, to. So that's I don't a... need the advantage, though, that's fine. That's okay. a 24. I'm going to roll again just to see whether I can get critical and that's the thing oh, that's so we we'll go with the 24 okay if anyone if any, athletics if anyone yeah yeah because you'll just have to roll with the the punches because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hit a wall i think at some point quite hard according to mm. these guys what did you get blaze 72 72 wendy what did you get I'll see your 72 and i'll raise you to an 89 oh. well isn't wendy being held by zam then 
you've let go. Well, I mean, I've still got hold of. <laughs> I think I've got hold of you. I think I've got hold of you. They're hugging. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wendy, you can make another roll. I'll let, I'll I'll give you advantage. Cause he's holding you. No. <laughs> she <laughs> slips her, but forty-one. She slips out your grasp. Then yeah. as, as just the just the force. And it does t- sort of take everyone back, and anyone that was near a wall is just sort of like hits it. Um, both Blaze and Wendy take another four points because she failed that. Mm-hmm. I got a two. You you rolled a two. I rolled you? a two. Yeah, yeah. You can you can keep those two people the the ones you've been keeping calm. You can make sure that they're all right. Quill, mm-hmm. however, a roll stress for this. By the way, yeah, this will be this will be stress. Will be stress. Oh, this will be stress. Fuck, so I will get stress after you. Mm. Well, did, should I have taken stress on? Yes, if you fa- if you failed, you, you'll you'll take stress on this. I roll a two, and I still get two points of stress. Oh. Hate you, Vince. Uh, <laughs> Quill hits the wall hard, and he's unconscious. He's just he just he cracks his head on the inside of the, the helmet and he just knocked out. Like a prize fighter just absolutely took him out. Not dead though. He's not dead, but there's a <laughs> he just sort of hits his through it. No. He's not quite dead. He's not mm-hmm. quite dead. Uh <laughs> he's almost dead. No, he isn't. Um And then eventually after a while and the whole thing is just sort of shuddering and you know, it's it's chaos and if it, if it doesn't induce stress, I don't know what else would. Um, I'm not going to get anyone to make a panic roll, though, for this. Because even though all of this is happening, you know in the back of your minds you are moving away from wherever you were. And there's something about that that keeps you, that makes you feel better about what you're experiencing right now. And then eventually things begin to slow and calm down until they settle and you see one of the monitors on the top of this airlock it begins running the sequence for compression I've I've forgotten the name of it now Uh, the routine that astronauts when they go back into yeah it is compression isn't it decompression decompression. is it decompression or is it compression yeah Yeah. decompression yeah yeah. Um, and you start to feel the your stomach's turning as all that happens because that is quite an ordeal that's a strange thing to happen anyway before eventually the light goes green and you're back on the Susan O'Brien that's where we're going to take our break. Oh. Hey everybody, Vince here, Game Warden and General Mischief Maker when it comes to the Safe Space Show. Just wanted to say, we hope you're enjoying the show so far, and if you want to find out more about the other podcasts and general news that we have on the, this network, then why don't you follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at LawbreakerPod. And you can follow us on Instagram at Lawbreaker Radio. Just to be clear, that's L O R E Breaker Radio. But follow us there. We'll be sure to follow back and interact with the community and let you know a bit more about what's upcoming on the Lawbreaker Radio network. But uh, I think without further ado, enough of me. Let's get back to the show. And welcome back. So, the crew made it back to the Susan O'Brien. Battered, bruised, in all kinds of a state. But they are all on, for the most part, in one piece. And they are not alone. As they have three people with them. One of them currently unconscious. As the routines complete, and the green light, means that they can enter the ship properly. They're all in their vac suits. Some of them, the three um, strangers, 
all in shiny new vac suits. And then <laughs> there are four people with quite battered, some of them smashed, cracked, and st- <laughs> like torn uh, vac suits. Um, and a lot of them in a lot of pain, I'd imagine. Wendy's, <laughs> I don't know what it's like. Uh, Doc, your your forearm is stinging once again. After once once the adrenaline begins to sort of like it's still pumping through all of your veins and stuff. Once it starts to wear off, that's when the pain hits, and it hits again because you haven't taken some pills. You know, you don't want to take too many pills. Drugs for mugs. Uh, <laughs> 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 Just say no. Um, <laughs> just say panic check. No. Um, <laughs> so, but you are all basically breathing, and you have a moment. So, like, as you just see, you can just you see like the large figure of of Quill, just sort of he's unconscious there, and uh, and the other two are, are quite quiet. Doc okay. has calmed them, but they're still. <sighs> Sarah's so breathing. Sam's going to help help Wendy up. And I, yeah, we give her a hug. And just say, "You should have let me go." I just hope it. Can you pop my shoulder back in? You're currently all in your vac suits. You've still got the helmets on and stuff. And... Uh, I don't know whether I can pop your shoulder back. It'd probably be quite difficult wearing a vac suit. Let's, uh, I realise I'm asking the wrong person. Let's get these vac suits off and then let everybody get to the med bay. I'll just kind of lean in towards Sam and kind of bump helmets with him. Yeah, kind of like... <laughs> And uh And then cry. I'll just I'll um I'll help Wendy to the to the med bay. Yeah. Are you heading straight to the med bay first? From the I think you're oh, gonna... there, but as we head there I was sort of Darcy, we need to speak to the captain. Are we gonna go through decontamination as well or Yeah. Okay, so you um you meet your head just off to the side and all the, the steam jets and everything just washing the suit off and you can at that point that's when you can take the suits off and it's st- everything stings you know because you're trying to if i remember correctly last time you did this you took your suits off and then you were washing every, you were because you were worried about the decontam the contaminants weren't you um so it's a na- it's it's a horrible procedure doing something like this Do you know what i mean it's like it's like having a hot steam shower and with a wire brush it is, it is nasty, but necessary. Um, however, um, before, there are a couple of people that aren't used to this. Oh. Yes, mate? Uh, I was just going to say, I stim myself in the leg. <laughs> stim yourself, silly. <clears throat> mm. How many stims have you had? That be... <laughs> That's two within, I don't know, like an hour. Because <laughs> I, <stimmed, laughs> I stimmed as we left that, uh, the room with the tentacles. And now I'm stimming again. Give me a body save. Body save. Do you openly do this? As soon as like you, you take the stuff off, you immediately just pull out a stim pack and... I'll be at the back of the queue. So I'm not secretly yeah. doing it, but yeah. I'm also not yeah. showing anyone I don't believe much. anyone saw you do the other one either. I think you, you did that before... No, I was on my own. You're like, on your own, yeah. Already gone. Yeah, make a body save. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. That's a isn't su- that Eleven. No, that's a success. It's a critical success. Because it's two numbers the same. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Um. You because... feel great. Because of a because of a critical success. That's the thing. Because of a crit- no. cause of, uh, um because of a critical success. Um Strength and Combat, isn't it? So so whenever you take a stim pack, you do not get addicted 
That is a very important thing here. Wait, you, for, for for the rest of you are time? Not, no, 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 no. For now. Oh. If you take another one in like in the next half a day to a day, you're going to have to make we'll another see. body save, yeah. Um, and that's a character choice if you want to do that, you know. But you are not mechanically addicted to this, so I, I don't have to tell you what that means. Um, I do, I do, <laughs> I am going to tell you though that uh, if you roll me 2d10s, if I can find it, yeah, it's two, I know I've got two, where's the bloody, there we go, right, three, um, then for 30 minutes you have advantage to strength and combat rolls. Because you rolled a critical, this is a total homebrew roll I'm doing now. Roll uh, 2d10, please. Two. Uh, Three. Nine. Nine. That's how much health. That's how much health you get back. Ooh. Normally it's 1d10, but with a critical success, it's. And he, t- he took one not too long ago as well, so it's just sort of. His adrenaline's pumping. Holy shit. Yeah. We get full health. <laughs> you are buzzing. You can you can hear sound. No, you can hear color and see sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. no, um... <laughs> um... Come on, let's get decontaminated. <laughs> Woo! And there are, of course, the rest of you. You you know this drill. You've been, you've been on sites and you've had to do this sort of thing. There are a couple of people. Who's waking up Quill? By the way, are you just dragging him in? <laughs> He's out cold. <laughs> I think I probably would have maybe asked Blaze to get him. Don't worry, Duck. Uh, get him. No, Fireman, carry him. Okay. okay. Fireman's leg. Yep. Yeah. Um. Not looking where his head's being no. bonked by door frames. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, oh God. Uh, I mean, it certainly wakes him up. And. Uh, him back out. <laughs> what's happening? Oh. Um, <laughs> and the decontamination uh, process you're used to it there are three people on this ship that are not used to this at all and each of them are going to make a body save to see how to see if they should get stressed about this I'm, I'm going to try and stay with Sarah and hold her hand to try and if I can keep her as calm as possible through the process okay 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 um, and she probably stands she, so she'll get advantage on that um, the other two have disadvantage because they haven't had a stim pack they're still cryo sick so let's see would I notice this that you, they... know, you know this that they're, they're, they're looking I mean Quill he's he had his yeah. clock cleaned but Roy's also looking he's looking pale like please did you give them the stims they were for them. What did you do? Well, I'm pretty sure I gave one to Wendy and I had to take one because of my leg. But we saved them. That's the important thing, Doc. Have you got any stims left that I can give them now? Let me check. No. How many did you take? Oh, it's tough to tell. It's been a manic day. Come on, let's go. You can see his eyes, Doc. You see mm-hmm. his eyes, the pupils are. Plates. Right. Yeah. I don't say anything else, but I do file this away for later. <laughs> the Doc will remember this. Zam's going to pull that inhaler out of his pocket and just say to the Doc, is this any good? Yes, probably. You give us one of the the one who's awake, I guess. <laughs> now, um, Quill and Roy they they failed their check, so they have a bad time of it, and they they get get stressed by this um, because because the players have have like NPCs are now on the board now, 
So now these NPCs have little stat blocks. They have little little stress levels. Do I gain stress when they fail checks as well? I will not allow that. I, you're you're fine because you were concentrating on Sarah. I mean, I'm not, but <laughs> and and because of that, because of that, Sarah succeeded on her check. Perhaps oh. if she perhaps if she had failed, you would have gathered the stress, but you were focused entirely on her. I, I got enough stress. And she, but she's still crying. You know, she's still yeah. completely shook up. And oh yeah, she saw her husband cutting yeah. off. She's yeah. fucked. Yeah. Who's getting that inhaler? Um, I'll just give it to the dog it, and then it, he can it, choose. Um, yeah. Oh, Quill's still unconscious, isn't he? Um, he's he's kind of he's he's with it. He's he's groggy. And he's just kind of like you're going through the de- decontamination period, and you know the, oh, the oh. showers, and he's like, Ugh. I give it to Roy. Okay. What does this do? Just, just, it'll calm you down. Really? What do I? What do I do? Do I just? <laughs> <laughs> the hell was in there, Doc? <laughs> that was chill. It's very what? warm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he's not going to be much use for anything for a little while, but he'll at least be calm. <laughs> hey, buddy, how many <laughs> fingers am I holding up? <laughs> oh. Wow. You've lost one of your fingers. <laughs> Is that a real moustache? And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Doc, looking at you, realise this is someone that maybe not of hasn't used this particular type of recreational drug before. Knees must. Yeah, and he's out of it. <laughs> giving him some stims, but uh... yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so. Um... You you get out of the decontamination showers, um, raw, hurting, and you can all make your way up to the med bay. These new people obviously don't know where they're going. They're very confused. They're, they're like you, you notice that Quill is the one that's a little more. He's kind of with it. Like Sarah's just she's just sticking to you like glue, Doc. She doesn't know right now. And <laughs> as for Roy, you just have to lead him with. <laughs> <laughs> For the for the next, oh god, fifteen minutes. <laughs> he's, he's away with the fairies. <laughs> oh, this is a lovely ship. Come on, Cheech, this way. <laughs> oh dear! And you hear over the um the in the intercom. Is everyone on? We're, we're all aboard, Captain. If you have a moment, maybe you could join us in the med bay. Okay, I'll be there as soon as possible. And, uh, yeah, you can all make it, and your it isn't long before you head back to the the sterile environment of the med bay. Admiral Mittens greets you, Doc. Immediately a calming presence. Not as calming as that inhaler. Better, Give her a little better. scritch on the head with my good hand. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. Can Wendy go looking in and around the doc's desk, knowing there's booze? <laughs> Immediately, you see Wendy sort of she sort of moves and starts looking through cupboards and stuff. I, I walk. Also, over. she does a bizarre thing against a wall to pop her shoulder back in because nobody else seems to want to do it. So. Oh, I know I've got damage. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, at least yeah, it's yeah. Back in its socket. Yeah, give me, give me a strength check with advantage. Mm-hmm. Wait, I, I'll, I'll allow the military training on this. Uh, that's a sixty-two. So that's not very good. That's a forty-three, which is very good. So yes, yeah, just save. It stings. It hurts, but you immediately and the rest of you just hear the like that, and you turned around and. You know I was going to fix that for you, right? You've got a you've got a line of people. Everybody's got an appointment today. <laughs> yes, well, 
and I then just open a the like a cupboard at the bottom of my desk, pull out a bottle and offer it to her. <laughs> yeah. I mean he starts swinging. It's a screw top. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> a hard core. <laughs> bites the glass. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe share it around. We could all. No. Uh, no. Okay. Well. Wow. And Wendy sits kind of on the floor, mm. possibly tucked away behind the desk just yeah. with a bottle. Yeah. And Wendy, you, you you look you look down. Um, I say as you, as you look at Wendy, you all look like just just dirt and grime, and like Wendy has like it's sort of a, a little bit clearer where you can see she's been crying, and it's but she just sat there with the bottle of booze. And you notice the the quite clean new pair of boots that she has, <laughs> um, and. Uh, and you have a moment whilst you're in the med bay. If Doc, you want to start, I do want to start just checking people over, seeing what I can do to. How's everyone looking? Um, I've, holding leg. I've I've lost a lot of health. I've got one wound with my gammy hand. Yeah, yeah, I've got one wound, and then I got I've lost two extra health. Yeah, on top of that as well. I've right? discovered that my true guard it was a fraud, <clears> and <throat> that. You know, everybody's a bad guy, and and I'm one, and yeah. You might be beyond my capabilities here, Wendy, but yeah. uh... anybody else got a gaping wound? <laughs> In my heart. <laughs> right, come at the front of the queue then. <laughs> He's just... <Interrupt>, duck. <laughs> <laughs> he just leans back on the bed table, and you can see there's a there is a, like like a hole like that, like punch at the back of his thigh. Fucking hell! I didn't know it was that big, Vince. How, how are you feeling? Oh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a toothpick, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprisingly good. Uh, considering then all. I'm going to take care of the others first, and I go to the three passengers we've brought on board. And I check them over. <laughs> okay. Uh, obviously, uh, one of them is in a drug-induced sort of chill state for a bit. Um, he seems to be fine. Um, you do a routine sort of medical, like check their sort of heart rates and just the just the temperature. Just make sure everything. Quill's got. He's got a. He does have a wound on the back of his head. It's like like the back of his, he's he's got like short and and you, his quill all back is a is a is a tall tall black man. He's like a he's built like an American football player. Um, he's got like immaculate immaculate facial hair. You know he's NFL standard. Do you know what I mean? He's that kind of thing. But the back of his hair is sort of matted because where he cracked his head. I will. I'll probably need some stitches in there. Yeah, patch him up, give him some painkillers. <clears throat> okay. So just mark, mark off the pain pills um, with the sheet. Um, I, I fake coughed loudly. Do to I, get... I? I assume I have more supplies in the med bay than I had on me. Yes, if you look, um, there is a sort of supply. There is a list on the the map that I gave these these guys, which is slightly updated. Um, but you've got plenty of pain pills and things like that. And yeah, you've got like cool. yeah. um, essentially a lot of the stuff that you're picking up. Was sort of extras because I, I think yeah. you picked up a few things, didn't you? On, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and there is, for instance, there is in this medical bay. This thing's like a foldable stretcher, and there's like a med scanner. There's actual sort of like equipment for checking things as well. And it's, it's not just syringes yeah. and scalpels and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. He's the one. Quill's the one with the the physical damage. Um, Sarah's just she just she just needs a moment. She's yeah, absolutely traumatized. She just. She doesn't know uh, quite where she is, where she is, or where she, what, what's going on. Okay, Blaze, let's have a look at you then. No, get up, D. I present my leg. Yeah, uh, the dress uniform is ruined. Um, that he's wearing now that he's out of his. <laughs> I'm a bit too buzzy to notice at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so this uh, this leg's going to have to come off, Blaze. 
You're not taking my leg, duck? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just uh, having some fun. <laughs> oh god. Um so it needs I'm also significant chewing some of those rocket pellet sweets. Oh yeah, the ones you, the ones you picked up. You notice now he's got candy on him. <laughs> he's got candy from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> Um, and you're going to need to significantly bandage it up and suture it, and like you know. I will it's... attempt to do that, and advise him not to do any like heavy duty work for a bit. Try not to put too much weight on it. Maybe lay off the stims. Have you got any left duck? No. Easily done. <laughs> I hobble off. <laughs> I'll check on Zam. Yeah. <laughs> How is Zam doing? Uh, yeah, so I've lost quite a lot of health. Mm. So Zam has, you notice now, like, as well as, like, he was the one that went full Ash from Evil Dead, like, covered in gore when he was cutting into a monster. But now that it's been sort of washed off, you can see he's got a nasty gash, like, on the top, like, about that. It hasn't caught his eye, it hasn't, it's not near the eye, but where the creature smashed you in the face, if you remember Zam. It was like full of like just yeah. wires and metal, and it just deeply. A, a, it's going to need stitches as well. Probably going to be a scar there, Zam. Uh, it's the right chick dig scars. Yes, well, that'll be nice for the future ex Mrs. Brazel, I'm sure. <laughs> You're a funny guy, Doc. <laughs> You're a funny, funny guy. Some bedside manner, honestly. <laughs> The thing is, you don't know what doctor he is. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a good yeah. doctor. Patch them up as well. Yeah. So you, you patch them up. You mean and then I do my hand. Am I rolling for reducing this health? Uh, not quite yet. Cause you, you're you're yeah. just going to... It's, it's going to take rest. With okay. Yeah. Um, this isn't one of those. I mean, the pills and the stim packs, add, they like sort of add a sort of stimulant to it but most of the time it's just you just have to rest and recover Don't the doc is there so he could he his he will help the healing process thankfully um but you are patched up and okay. uh, so i'll say to the dog what about wendy she just, needs, she just needs to finish that bottle and then rest time possibly Conversation about uh, some counselling, maybe Wendy. A new shoulder. I got mashed in a cryopod. My shoulder. Ow! I dislocated twice, and I put it back in. If and then I had to do I, a spaceship, and then I was, ah. If I take a look at your shoulder, yeah. Do you promise not to hurt me? Ever? <laughs> Just for the next day or so. What kind of day? Like 24 hours? Or... Yes, 24 hours from this moment you won't cause I'm... me any physical injury. Okay. And I'll take a look at her shoulder. <laughs> and busted up like both of the arms you notice like the dislocated shoulder was is bad and the other shoulder as well has significant damage as well she's just gonna it's just gonna take rest with this as well as probably uh a, a sort of a routine of pain pills to help deal with it because this is these are the, the muscle damage and everything this is the one that's going to linger a bit more because the way she pushed herself. I give her the pill, say, I don't recommend taking these while you're drinking that, however. I'm not stupid. You're just drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, did you, Wendy, do you take any of the pills? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, good, good. Very well done, Wendy. <laughs> I'm scared of I'd her as well. The, take the bottle. Okay, I hang it up. And I take the bottle and, and, and... And you begin to leave until the door opens and you're, no. and you're face-to-face with Captain Austin. Yeah. He's like... I go back in. Oh. I sit by there. God damn. What the... And then she sees the... the new people. <laughs> what the... What the hell happened out there? Do you remember the passenger manifest you sent me, Captain? Yeah. This is all that's left. What the f... (laughs) And over the... (laughs) (laughs) And you... I presume that you tell the Captain of what happened at that point. Of which, at some point, she sits down and she asks Wendy for a drink. From the bottle. <laughs> Just one swig. Come on, come on, darling. Come on. Yeah. Oh, actually, actually, Dark, have you got any more? I've got, I've got more, yes. <laughs> is it the same same cupboard? Yeah, you, you know where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she immediately just pours herself a glass and has a sit down. Go on. And you continue to <laughs> tell her about everything and, uh, she she almost gets a little paler herself. Um, but you know that she believes you because she also witnessed this ship, things happening with this ship that should not have been happening. And uh, and when all's sort of said and done, um, and she she greets the the people that are that have come on board. Um, Dark, uh, um, if you could um, just keep them here in the med bay for a little bit and um we'll figure out some way um we're gonna have to shift some things around just to make sure that they've got somewhere to sleep Captain, um, is the icarus still nearby as as far as i s- saw we were leaving it in our wake that thing do we have any way of destroying it destroy yeah, another ship comes across um, it, I, Captain. I, I, I mean, I know everything that's happened, but um, this ain't a military vessel. I, I mean, I know you've been through a lot, but did y'all bang your heads as well? Yes, Several but times, the Captain. Point. The, the doc's right. we got to get rid of this thing. Right if now. anyone else comes across that ship... And what, what do you suggest? Could we uh, hit the power cells with the uh, laser cutter? What power cells, Zam? Power cells on the front did of the you, ship. Did you, see, did you even get to the front of the ship? No. We didn't get very far in the ship at all. Things are live. So what makes you think that the power cells are where they're supposed to be. I don't know. And that, do thi- that thing. What do you was... suggest, Captain? Leave it there to right uh, now, catch I... up with us. Right now, I'm moving as fast as we can away from this thing. And uh, I know there's there's no large mirror in this place right now, but I can see the state of y'all. And you're in no condition to go firing that laser cutter anywhere. Zam? Damn it, Jane. I'm a doctor, not a military tactician, but even I know that we cannot let innocent people be killed by this thing. If any other ship comes across this thing, they may not be as lucky as we were. We have to do something. We have to try something. Keep our distance, yes, but... Yeah, we're the dark on this. I need y'all to come with me right now. Um, I'm sorry about this, folks. We're just... um. We're just going to figure this out. Um, the Dark will be with you in just a moment. Come with me. And uh, she leads you to the sort of the planning office of the ship, <laughs> leaving these these shell-shocked... I mean, you can see, like, Roy's... He's like... 
He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, where am I? Uh, I like to think he's having a staring contest with Admiral Mittens. Yeah. Oh, so fluffy. Um, <laughs> he's got the munchies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's eating catnip. <laughs> <laughs> Just crawling around the office. Some of these deli- Have you got any more of these delicious biscuits? <laughs> uh, the side adventures of cat. Admiral Ritten- <laughs> Mittens and Roy. <laughs> um, and you notice um, Quill sort of steps up and he's like, "Don't worry, ma'am. We'll 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 stay here." Um, and she she takes you all up. Stay with them if that would be helpful. No, I think you should come with us. No, honey, he's... honey, you gotta you gotta. Come with us. He's very handsome. I'll get another pot of coffee on the go. Um, Come on, soldier. Can I help Wendy? Yeah. Uh, damn it, Blaze. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> no, you're not. Come on, let's go get you a coffee. That <laughs> went up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So you go back up to the planning room and uh, there's a, a reassuring hum of the ship before away from these strange people. It's just the crew. And she sits down. Look, Doc, I know you're concerned about this thing, but right now my concern is this. You only just got away from there with your lives. This ship only just got away intact actually not intact I had to blow a good portion of my ship up just to get you all in have a chance of getting you all back in this ship now correct me if I'm wrong but we are still up that creek and I don't see a paddle in any of y'all hands We ain't exactly going to outrun that thing, are we? I I outran it so far. I don't know what that thing wants. I can contact the reg. I, I'm going to talk to Rooster. I'm going to damn sure make sure we get some more information and get some help out here. I'm going to get the message out about this thing and what has happened. But you got to understand... We were fucked before you even went onto that ship. And now we're doubly fucked. We ain't... Without a a coil... We ain't never getting home. And that was bad enough. If we were rationing. And I know Dick was looking forward to doing that rationing. But now, not only... Do we have... One less android... But we got four more human lives. And I'm including you on that, Blaze. Because, honey, honey, you've been an absolute star, but I did not plan for you to be awake at this this particular moment in time. Understood. Right now, we just got to think about surviving. We could put them in the cryopods. That's another thing. This ship isn't built for the amount of people that we got on it now. We should have left them there. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that thank thank the stars that you got these people out, but I, but we need we need help. So what's the plan, captain? Well, the plan is right now, I keep pushing this thing as far as it'll go. And I'm going to be looking in the rearview mirror that whole goddamn way. Y'all need to get some rest. That Marine there has got a hole in his leg that you can put a baseball through. Your duck didn't do a very good job. Zam got hit so hard he's actually spoken sense a couple of times, and that scares the hell out of me. It scares the hell out of me too, Captain. He's I'm, a, cool. I'm agreeing with the duck. <laughs> and Wendy... Honey, you just... You just need to get some sleep, honey. You look... You look a little less beautiful than you normally do. Um, okay? No, don't sleep now. Oh. Look up, soldier! I'll wear 
<laughs> Are you right, Captain? Not, not just, not just about the sleep, but about the help. Be the help. Now, I'm going to contact whoever I can about this, because we're frankly stuck, and we just got to keep moving. Doc, I know you got a clear head on your shoulders. And it may be because Wendy's just drank most of your booze right now. But you got to make sure those people are okay. I have no idea who those people are. And if they came from that ship, then they're sure as hell not used to living like us. At least they're alive. Exactly. So let's keep them that way. Let's not accept any more suicide missions, eh? Hell no. This is not part of our job description. Get some rest. Doc. Just do what you do. We'll pick this up in the morning. I'm going to have a sleepless night as it is because I'm going to be doing several things at once. I'm sorry, y'all. I had no idea this was going to be like this. I never would have said yes. But we can only deal with what we got in front of us. I want to know where those orders came from. As do I. But for now, let's deal with the here and now. You get healing, and I'll keep pushing this baby as fast as I can while she can take it. Wendy, do you want a coffee? Perhaps you should get some sleep. Let's get you to your bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and the captain begins leading you, Wendy. Now, where do you tell her to go? Do you tell her to go to your barracks or do you tell her to go to your happy place <laughs> Jesus happy. hold the wheel <laughs> happy place okay okay honey now, I'm gonna go to tools look, yeah, mazes look, yeah I, I, I know honey look look, because we made some sharp moves some of those things may have been knocked over but should be fine. Now I'll be very careful. You are not here. The rest of you are not here. I don't know. I'm a here. British drunk. Person. I know. I know. You go. You come British. <laughs> it's very good whiskey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the rest of so she's left the rest of rest of you three and is leaving Wendy back. She goes. Okay. And the dark room is there. Okay. You. Do you want to settle in here, huh? I'll, I'll go sleep okay. now. Do you switch the light on? Or are you leaving it in the dark? I'll switch. I'll switch the light on. Okay. <laughs> so um, I don't fall over anything. That, that's that's good, hun. That's good, hun. And when you switch the light on, what do you see, Wendy, in front of you? Um. Well, from where we are by the door, just the racks and racks of tools and maintenance stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can't see anything? No, not from there. But if you go to the back of the room, around the back of all the shelving units, that's that's where you'll find the shrine. <laughs> and you head back towards the shrine. Now, I just got to remember... Wendy's got so many conditions mechanically right now. <laughs> and Lizzie made her drunk. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Now, which one of these affected the... Uh, frightened. Frightened. Ah, uh, yes. Your phobia. Oh, no. You see the shrine. Describe the shrine. 
for us and the lovely viewers at home, Wendy. As soon as you, the captain is like, you gonna be okay, hun? You gonna be, you gonna be fine? Okay, I'll go, I'll go check on the others and uh, speak to these new folks some more. Yeah, yeah, just rest that, rest that shoulder. And she, she leaves you, and you begin walking through these barracks, and it's almost look like moving through the library at the start of Ghostbusters. It's taken on a whole new meaning. And when you get to this shrine, what does it look like? So up on the wall, the one in the side walls, there is a, a huge shape of an octopus made out of bits of fabric and all bits of wicking and strapping um, that, you know, bits of old flight suit that have been put together and then anything decorative. So there's some post-it notes that came from the, the Echo 237. Um just little bits of tiny, you know, trinkets and stuff. But it's this, yeah, probably good six foot tall kind of octopus collage mm. to greet me. As soon as you see that, you stop in your tracks. Could you make me a fear save with disadvantage, please? I'm guessing my theology won't help me now. Ooh, a 51 and a 70. Double fail. You immediately gain. Four points of stress. As as, as just as soon as you see this, the tentacles flashbacks to the creature coming from below flashbacks to the ship seemingly reaching out towards you the more just everything is just flashing back the tentacle the tentacle arm from this strange thing that used to be human that burst through an android's face everything is just a kaleidoscope of what do you do i'm going to throw the bottle at it yeah I push the last dregs of whiskey. And I'm going to reach into my pockets and see what I file into my suit. In fact, I've not got my suit. Where have I got the stuff that I had before? And I've got a pistol. And I've got a hand welder. <laughs> and I'm going to take one of them to the whole thing. Which one are you going to take, Wendy? I don't know. How shall we choose? Do you want to choose? I mean, the dice are obviously going to choose. The dice are going to choose. Let's say... Roll a D... Let's make it a percentage as well. Roll a D100. 50 and above. You're torching it. Forty-seven. <laughs> oh, fuck. It is an internal wall. I shall stress that this is the wall between. It's a solid. Yeah, yeah. This is a pistol as well. Between but... armory yeah. and <laughs> yeah, the engine room. Yeah, not this... the outer wall to space. This is yeah. <laughs> this isn't a laser cutter doing this. This is a pistol. This isn't a shotgun doing this. This is a pistol. You know, this isn't a pulse rifle. So basically, Wendy pulls both out. On a spiritual point breaking it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it is it is just dropping it and you just you just fire. What are you aiming? Because the, um, this this whole thing is it's almost it's it's almost like slightly three D. It's not just painted and yeah, stuff, it's, it's like yeah, a it's collage. It's kind of fabric kind of collage built out and it's got three hearts across the middle. So I'm aiming one shot for each heart. I've got four in this pistol, so one shot for each heart and one straight through the eyes. Between the eyes. Uh, just make a combat check. Just make a uh, just make a combat roll. This won't this won't incur stress because you had four from the from what the reaction. If you succeed, then you hit one every single one. Thirteen. <laughs> oh, it's just just the instinct. It's just there is like this 
this marine that is just sort of you know caked on grime and mud with like just tear marks down her face and she shudders and then like a robot the eyes just boom. it's like that. It's like a moment in the equaliser when everything just stops and she just pulls out a gun and bang 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 just and you all hear it like four shots four loud shots because the barracks are there's an echo to it it doesn't it doesn't go through the walls um but they embed these these shots in bed and she nails every single shot that she does until it's just and uh <laughs> then i might pass out then uh we all hear that you all hear everyone hears the gunfire uh, it's it's like what the running what towards the it. god yeah run to the... <clears throat> yeah, i hobble <laughs> with my gun yeah um i am passed out on the floor holding a gun my god she shut herself four times <laughs> there's, there, there's no wounds she what the clearly didn't do that Oh, you're the doctor. Well, yeah, she's still doing with a gun. Uh, I'm sorry. Fuck the gun. Do you see what is in her other hand? There's a hand welder. She's unconscious and she's got a hand welder. And the wall <laughs> smells like booze. <laughs> smells like flammable booze. Yeah, we'll just take the hand welder and like, slowly yeah. out of her hand. Yeah, keep keep that out of her. Keep her away from any this. We What's need to get get her, her in a room. Get her get her in a safe to leave her in the armory. You know we're not leaving her in here. Get her back in a no, goddamn we room. Have left her in here in the first place. Brazel, do you want another fucking scar? Pick that <laughs> pick that woman up and get her back in a goddamn room now. I I cap. <laughs> she storms off. <laughs> And uh, you, you carry Wendy back to her actual room, which doesn't have any tentacles and stuff in it anywhere. I presume. I don't know Wendy. No. Yep. No. So Wendy is out of it. The rest of you, as the captain is going up and making her calls and stuff, what do the rest of you do? What are the rest of you do? Uh, I'm just going to go to the engine room. Okay. I'm going to take down the mural. Of the octopus. Yeah. They start picking it apart. Watching out for glass, of course. <laughs> yeah. And well, let's try to yeah. set it on fire. Yeah. Like a good janitor. <laughs> 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 Just a picture of the doc handing me a like, mop and bucket. I uh, I head back to the med bay to make sure the three the other okay. three patients are okay. Yeah, and they're, they're when you get back there, certainly they are freaked out again. They heard gunfire. They've come onto a strange ship, and all of a sudden they hear gunfire and panicked voices. And, and Sarah's like, "What's, what's going on? What's... Everything's oh, fine. Had... Every, everything, everything is fine. Just we're all going through something at the moment." And he just slumps down in his chair. And uh, I imagine from there you could hear the clanging of the uh, it's coming from the engine room as well. I'm always like, is the engine supposed to make that noise? When uh, when Zam's down there, yes, it, it, it's it's how he centers himself. Oh, I see. I used to do that with Sudoku. Of course you did. It's less noisy though. <sighs> okay, uh, Mister Zedling, let's. Uh, is there um, Doctor Forrest? Wasn't it? You mm. can see that this guy's towering over you. Yeah. He's he's a good six five six six. This <laughs> this doc- <laughs> Whereas Roy's like five two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess we're we're just gonna have to bunk up for now. Just you all have to spend tonight here. I'm afraid this is the only place where we've got free beds tonight. That's 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 fine. What what whatever whatever you can spare. Um. Thank you for what it's worth. 
For what it's worth, you're welcome. Okay. Um, should we just... I, I mean, I don't know where we are on this ship. Do you want to... Sh I don't, do we just pick a room? And Doc, you have three people that have to stay on the ship and they've just been left in bed by... <laughs> yeah. I, I just suggest you stay here for now and we'll get through tonight and then we can speak to the captain about settling you elsewhere on the ship for now. Understood. And, uh, after talking to you, they bring out some blankets and they just try and you, you notice Roy sort of looking occasionally looking up at that that cupboard where the captain got the booze out of his eyes occasionally just dart over to your boo <laughs> booze cupboard but he says nothing look on it <laughs> <laughs> and uh are you going back to your uh, are you finding a different place because this is the med bay is not necessarily a place that's made for living arrangements you, you, they, they can they can bunk up they can find somewhere do you know what I mean they can find a corner cozy corner or there I'm just going to sit down behind behind my desk and I'm going to speak to Darcy okay that's it hello Mr Forrest how can I be of help Darcy, how much information do you have about the Icarus? We have the data pack that I gave to you. We were not given much else other than that. A lot of its details are classified. No schematics or anything like that? Apart from the floor plans, it would seem that the most of the internals and the, in, and the hyperdrive itself were classified. And could not be accessed. Classified by who? And there's a small pause here. There seems to be several idents of great importance who have classified this. One of which. <laughs> One of the. Heads of Echelon, one Regis Valmont. Is that a name I know? That is not a name you know. Okay. But Darcy goes on. It would seem that Regis was an executive that worked alongside someone. Who was aboard the Icarus? Oh, I need to get the passenger manifest. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. Was um, while I'm searching up there, I think it's yes. And while I'm pausing and trying to find out the information, Darcy's obviously giving you lots of schematics and details, of, but but nothing really that you, you didn't already know. Yeah. However, one of the guests was an Echelon VIP, one of the heads of Echelon. And his name there's a, is Darwin Buchanan. That is a name you do recognise. You know a lot of. You don't know him, but you know he was a big wig. Echelon in this universe, they run everything. They they have their fingers in all different sort of corporations and pies, and you know. And he was one of the the high table of Echelon. And according to the manifest, Darwin Buchanan was aboard that ship. Thank you, Darcy. Can I do anything else for you, Doctor? Would no. You, would you like you. some whale song to help, help you sleep? No. 
A babbling brook, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Darcy, I think we've reached the end of this moment. Thank you. Certainly. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Darcy. And the Doctor slumps down and puts his head in his hands and despairs quietly. <laughs> And as the the low hum of the ship, everyone begins to nod off. As, as Blaze, you he- tired and probably stinking a little bit of booze and cleaning products, <laughs> you head back to your barracks. Which I think this is the first time because you've been. Have you? Oh, you've been on the ship for a few days before you went to the Icarus, didn't you? I think you were Yeah, it's where I got changed into my dress yeah. whites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, your dress whites, which are essentially ruined as you head back. How do you feel about that? Disappointed. <laughs> now I'm thinking, is there any cleaning product? I, I, no, I'm thinking Dick would know how to clean this. <laughs> the I- it in the corner. The irony. And for the first time in a little while, the crew of the O'Brien eventually get some sleep. Although for Wendy, it is not a it is not a peaceful sleep. You wake up, you open your eyes, Wendy, and everything is dark. It's like you're in a in a room of complete pitch black and you go to move and you hear the sound of water like you're walking in ankle deep water what do you do? slightly put my arms out to see if I can find a wall. You put your arms out and you're feeling you're feeling for the wall. And eventually, you, you feel it. And the wall is to either side of you. It's within touching distance. Your, your palm flat against either side of the wall. And it's cold. It feels wet. But it feels like steel. It feels like cold, wet metal. You begin pushing forward. And then you just hear a... What are you doing? Possibly adding to the pool of ankle deep water. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm going to try and meditate in my dream Okay. and try and find the thing that I would normally hook onto to give me calm which would be? my octopus god who I just destroyed <clears throat> But I had forgotten because I was asleep, because I was drunk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you, you're trying to hold on, and and you feel like your hands give a little in the walls, and then it doesn't. As you're concentrating on your octopus guard and the calming movement of the tentacles and the squid-like creatures underwater, and you. You find it, but then your hands give a little, and it's no longer like it's on steel. It's like you're literally pressed. It's like you just put your hands on two octopuses on either side. But they push inwards before your hands disappear into the sides of the walls. And it's cold. So unbelievably cold. But then you begin to feel something on your forearms, on your bare forearms. It is 
the movement of slick, sticky tentacles slowly climbing and wrapping around your arms. And you go to pull your arms free and they won't move. And then you realise the, wa- the water is no longer splashing. It is, it's almost like you're stepping in sludge. And, a, and it's solidi- solidifying around your ankles and beginning to rise up. And as you feel the tentacles climb up your shoulders and up your neck, you are frozen in fear. And this is all in complete black. You can't, you can't see anything, but you can just hear. And then the tentacles go into your ears, and they climb over your face and go up your nose, and you can feel them dancing around your eyes. Make a fear safe. <laughs> With disadvantage. Borrow a phrase, Vince, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that will be a fail with a 60. There's no stress on this. You're in a dream, so yeah. But it was a fail. And the fear kicks yeah. in and you go to scream. And when you scream, the tentacles begin entering your mouth. And it's at that point when you feel there's more sort of strange appendages rising up over your... It's over your knees, then over your thighs, and you can feel everything. All of a sudden, you are no longer in a corridor. You are are surrounded by something organic. But it's strange... At the same time, you can feel there's a there's a vibration to it as it begins to completely encapsulate you, like the like the hum you get from a computer, like that sort of that strange vibration of something. You can hear that in the background. The and as you as you are completely covered and wrapped. You just hear... It's like a a radio transmission that's breaking up. And just before... You feel this thing, once it's there, it begins to pull outwards. And you feel your body ready to give... Completely give in. And you just hear... And that's where we're going to end this week's episode. You have been listening to Safe Space, a tabletop role-playing podcast featuring the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. Playing the game were Jim Bamfield as Zam Brazel, Lizzie Boyle as Wendy, Gavin Mitchell as Dick Sloan, PJ Montgomery as Dr. Bill Forrest and Vince Hunt as the Game Warden. Podcast produced and edited by Vince Hunt. In-game music composed by Tabletop Audio. Visit tabletopaudio.com to discover a world of ambient music you can use in your home games. The Safe Space theme was composed by Elliot Red. Find more of Elliot's work on YouTube. To find out more about the Mothership RPG system, visit mothershiprpg.com. Follow the show on social media at Safe Space RPG. And for more podcasts, visit lawbreaker.podbean.com. This has been a Lawbreaker Radio production.